Okay. So, uh, welcome everyone to uh, uh, DCLA. Uh, how many folks, this is your first time at a Drupal camp? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, my first time at a Drupal camp was about three years ago. That's when I got the bug. So be careful when you leave here, you're going to be a convert and evangelist for Drupal. Um, it just sort of happens by osmosis, I think. Um, so this is the blank to live in 45. So I'm going to try to build a Drupal website in 45 minutes. When I started out in, in Drupal world, it was hard to figure out what the modules you needed to use and sort of how to get going. Um, so that my give back is sort of going to be in a really fast presentation. And I may, you know, I may drop a couple things depending on how fast I can move the mouse. But we're going to take a blank site um, and put it, turn it into a, you know, a relatively decent brochure site. And along the way, I'll try to walk through all the things I think you need to make sure you do as you build a site and maybe mention some things that you should avoid, all of the things I did, essentially, um, when I was trying to learn. So I'm uh, Doug Hoffman. I uh, have my fingers in three things. I uh, work for Rich Yummel at Stage Free Solutions, a sponsor of this camp. Uh, we have a table out front, so if you're looking for me afterwards, want to ask questions, feel free to track me down. Um, we're down in San Diego. Uh, a, a lot of us are presenting this weekend. And uh, we also help put on the San Diego camp. So that's every January. So next January, we hope to see you down in San Diego. Um, I also work with Susan Rust at Drupal Anywhere, where we do uh, Drupal uh, services, custom consulting, and uh, training. And uh, in my spare time, when I want to freelance, I do it under my own brand, which is the Lakewood Group. So those are the three places you might find me. Um, and I'm not sure you know, how I'm going to tie together water skiing, mountain biking, and Drupal. Um, but uh, that was uh, this past Wednesday at Lake Elsinore water skiing. And when you water ski, you fall a lot. It hurts. You know, and when you mountain bike, last uh, Sunday I was in Mission Trails in San Diego, and I definitely hurt. Um, and I liken that to sort of my experience of trying to learn Drupal. It's like I was banging my head against the wall for a while, and it definitely hurt, and I definitely had lots of blood. And a lot of people say Drupal has a steep learning curve. Um, Susan, who I work with at Drupal Anywhere, uh, likens it more to a, a long wade out into water. It takes you a long time to get out to your knees and then to your, you know, up to your waist in the water. So you have to sort of be patient and, and work through it. Um, uh, what I will say is it's definitely worth it because Drupal is the Lego blocks of web building world. So you can virtually do anything. There's no limits. Um, in the Drupal world, there, I sort of break people out into sort of three, three things. Site builders who can take all the Legos and put them together into a site. Themers who can make that site look really cool. And then module developers who write all sorts of PHP code. So I'm essentially a site builder. I try to avoid writing code at all, you know, in any way. So if you're a, a coder, you know, I'm going to put, put you on the spot and ask, send the questions to you. If you're a themer and you know all about CSS, I want to put you on the spot and send the questions to you. This is about taking Drupal and its, and its modules and putting together a site without writing any code. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out, um, just give you a little demo. So this is essentially the site we're going to try to build in 45 minutes. Um, it's an adventure travel site. We have tours. We have guides. We have a contact us page, feedback page, a bunch of things like that. Um, and we're going to try to put that together in 45 minutes. So what I've, I've sort of cheated, I, I've pre-done and loaded up on uh, a VPS I have. Um, basically Drupal and all the modules I want. And if you're interested in trying it yourself, if you go to the session page, um, there's a link here to this page, which basically will let you download the zip file, which has all the basically all the modules and Drupal in it, which you could uh, explode. And then it's got this uh, PDF file, which is basically my little cookbook, which you'll see me looking down up front. I'm using my little cookbook to get through this uh, session. So that's where you can find that stuff. So basically, to start, I loaded up Drupal, all the modules I wanted uh, onto my VPS. I used FileZilla, so I just you know, downloaded the files from Drupal.org and uploaded them to the you know, blank site there. Um, I have a domain called DouglasCHoffman.com, and I just created a subdomain called DCLA1. And then I went into my PHP admin, and I created an empty database. So those were sort of the two things I cheated to do first. And here we're sitting at, you know, we just fired it up. We haven't done anything else. Uh, there's nothing on site, so let's just run and install. So basically, we can click through this stuff. Uh, and my database name is that. So I need to put in a database name and the user uh, name and password to access the database over the net. And then it's just going to fire off, and it's going to install all of Drupal for me.
How many people have installed Drupal already on their own? Okay, about half. Great, cool. So I'm going to just jump over to uh, the site for a second. So everything free in my mind is good too. So uh, FileZilla is what I use. Uh, oops. Yeah, it doesn't like, oh, you know what, I've had trouble here before. I won't do that. So what I was going to talk about is sort of the file structure of Drupal. So Drupal has a whole bunch of things in there. And one of the first mistakes I made was I saw a modules file and a theme file, and I started dumping all the things I downloaded from Drupal there. That's the don't hack core thing. I made the first major mistake. So there's a site folder where you want to put everything, and there's a uh, sites all themes, modules, uh, and libraries that you want to put things into. So we're going to call our uh, site Adventure Travel. I'm going to use one of my 50 email addresses for that. I'm going to set up a user ID called admin. Chrome remembers my last password, so I better put in the same one. And off we go. Up. Oh. It isn't the same password. Oh, yeah. So there, I've got Drupal installed, visit my own site, right? Uh, so that's, that's all you have to do to get it up and running. If I visit the site, it doesn't look like much, but you know, i got some uh, clearly menus at the top, things I can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the modules I want to use, uh, at least for the initial site, and uh, set up a WYSIWYG editor. So if someone really wants to go in and do WYSIWYG editing on pages and things like that, they can do that. So the first thing I typically do is I go to modules. And this is the standard stock Drupal 7 uh, admin uh, uh, screens. A lot of people use a module called admin menu, which you'll see a whole bunch of drop downs here on the top. So when people, when you see a site with that kind of stuff in it, they've enabled the admin module. It's actually a really useful one. It makes it a lot easier to do a lot of admin kind of stuff. So the first modules I want for this site are, I'm going to turn on the blog. So I just run through the list here. I'm going to actually turn off comments because uh, I don't want to use comments on the site. So the easy way to get rid of them as opposed to going to all the content types and turning them off is just turn it off globally. And then there's a great module called Devel, which lets you generate content for your site while you're building it so you can see this stuff. So I'm going to scroll down and find Devel. It's somewhere down here. There it is, Devel and Devel Generate will let me generate content for the site as I need it. And I'm going to enable another one called IMCE. This is a file upload module. So on I want to let people upload uh, uh, files in, using the WYSIWYG editor. This will do it. And I'm also going to use the libraries module, which is a cool module to use. It allows you to integrate JavaScript libraries. And there's three of them I'm using on this site. I'm using uh, jQuery. I'm using uh, CK Editor. And I'm using uh, Colorbox. So those are three JavaScript libraries I downloaded separately. And I put that, the, that JavaScript files into the libraries folder in my site's uh, directory. So I'm going to turn the, the library one on. And then I want to use the IMC bridge for WYSIWYG and WYSIWYG. So it's going to pick up that CK Editor JavaScript library I have. The WYSIWYG editor is going to go out and look at my site folder and say, oh, you got CK Editor. You can now use that to edit uh, your pages of your site. Do you have a list anywhere that? Um, no, but what you want to do is download the zip file from uh, the sessions page, and if you blast it out and look in the site file, and you can look in the modules fo folder and the themes folder and see all the stuff that's there. Um, and the cookbook uh, PDF that I'm running through here is there as well, so you should be able to sort of recreate this. So if anybody wants to try to do this on their own, just download that zip file, blow it out, get an a, a empty MySQL database, and then you know start running through the cookbook, and you should be good. So we got those guys. So now I'm going to go configure the WYSIWYG editor and those things. So let's go to, I'm going to go to configuration. A lot of times you can get to the same place from a thousand places. Um, but the configuration screen here is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to go configure under media IMCE, the upload that we used. And I'm going to turn on, just by default, for administrators and authenticated users, the user one profile, which basically lets you upload files. Um, so I've done that. Now I want to go configure the WYSIWYG editor to allow people to use that. So I'm going to go to WYSIWYG profiles. And the first thing I want to do, you see you get these filtered formats. So by default, it comes with filtered, full HTML, and plain text. So I'm going to say they can use the CK editor. 
since I used the libraries module, Drupal found out that I had that CK at our JavaScript library loaded there, and it, it makes it available to me. So I'm going to set those two to allow them to use that. You can create other format filters. There's a whole powerful thing about what you can allow people to do. And I'm just going to also quickly, um, just enabling it doesn't uh, do much. Uh, you have to go into this screen where you turn on what they're allowed to do. And Typically for full HTML, I'm going to give everybody this, but this is a list you would want to look at and make intelligent decisions about people that are using WYSIWYG or what do you want to allow them to do. Maybe you don't want them to do everything. I'm going to allow them to do bold, italic, and, and, uh, and, and you also use IMC to upload files. So that's the place you have to go to configure the WYSIWYG editor. I could do this, uh, we'll go ahead and do it. For the filtered HTML, you know, I probably would do less, right? Maybe uh, they can just bold things. So we've basically enabled the file upload. We've uh, set up the format filters for the WYSIWYG editor. And then the last thing I'm going to do is, it was one of those things that I actually just learned uh, recently, is there's under text formats. There's the list of three. And if I added my own filters, they would be there. Um, I can, anytime you see a list like this, you can drag things around and change list. So I'm going to put full HTML by, as it, in first in list. That makes it the default. So anytime anybody edits something by default, they get the, the full one. I was always forget, having to go down to below and select that file format because I hadn't found this screen yet. Okay, so now we've sort of set up the basic site with a WYSIWYG editor. And the second thing I want to do is uh, build out um, some pages. So I'm just going to add some content to the site. We're going to, by default, Drupal comes with three content types, Drupal 7 articles, basic pages, and blog entries, and we'll see in a second how we can add our own. But we're just going to add a quick page here. Uh, hang on a second, I need a file. Oops. Yeah, I'll do it on my own. So we're going to call this the uh, home page. I'm going to cheat and get some text here. Lips and warm gets ugly, so I like uh, this cake one. It's all about cakes. Stick some text in there. See that full HTML was already selected there so by putting it first in the list. I'm going to give it a URL ALS of home, so if I put in a slash home, this is where I'll go. I'm going to save that. There's the page. Um, little home icon in Drupal. It takes me back here, though, so I haven't set it up as my home page yet. If I go to configuration under site information, um, I can put a bunch of stuff in here, like uh, let's put in a slogan, we take you to your limits. Uh, and instead of node as the default home page, we're going to put in home, which is the URL I made when I made that page. So now if I click the little home button, there now we have a new home page. So we've got a home page set up. Um, let's add another page just for fun. We'll call it the about page some text in there. This one we're going to go in and uh, Drupal has a whole menuing system. Uh, the, the typical one that's across the top is called the main menu. So I'm going to add a menu link, call it about, and I'm going to make this page uh, its URL go to about. So now we have a second page. We have home and about. Um, if you go to structure under here, you can manage your menus. And that main menu is here. If I want to list the links, I can see that home and about are in this order. So just like that other screen, I can drag that around, change the order, save the configuration, and now the tabs are in the order I want them to be in. So that was how quickly I could make two pages on the site and get them into the menu system. Um, let's also create a uh, down in, well, let's actually look at this. So by default, we have some of these sidebar items here that maybe I don't want, I want to get rid of, and I got powered by Drupal at the bottom, and I love Drupal, but no customer wants that on their site in general. So in Drupal, there's a whole thing called the block system. So pages are laid out in regions, and you have blocks that you can drop into the region sidebar. Typically, it's header, footer, content area, sidebar left, sidebar right, or sidebar first and second. So if I go to structure blocks, it shows me all the blocks in the system and where they are. So th these three blocks are ones I'm going to set to none, which means they won't show up on the site anymore. And I'm sorry, Drupal, but I'm going to take you away for a second. And so when I save blocks, I've basically turned all those off. Let's add another block to the site for the footer region. I'll call it company info. I typically put the address, phone number, stuff like that I want in there. But for the moment, we'll do that. 
And as I'm creating that block, by the theme, so they're, they're in, on this site, the, there's an administration theme when I'm doing things on the back end, and there's a regular theme that people are going to see when they go to the site. That's Bardic. I'm going to say, let's put this uh, block that I'm about to create down in the footer. And I could also do things like, say, only show it on the front, front page, but this is something I probably want across the board. Uh, a note about other modules you might want to use, there's a module called Context, which a lot of people, if you're doing something more complex and want more complex rules than you can get here, Context is a module that everybody uses to sort of manage blocks. You can create little rules and, uh, rules, r rules and uh, results, basically, to control your blocks on your system. But we're just going to do the basic block system. So we created that block. There it is in the footer. So now if I go to the home page, we got Adventure Travel down at the bottom instead of powered by Drupal. So you know, pretty quickly you can see we're building up the site. Okay, so now we have some basic pages. Uh, the other one I'm going to do is uh, let's make a contact us page. So Drupal by default comes with a contact module. So if I just go turn it on, the idea here too is you're going back, you're looking for modules that you want to use. They may not, they may come with Drupal by default, but not be turned on. You may need to download them and then turn them on. So you do a lot of this finding all the modules and turning them on. So we're going to turn the contact module on. And then you always have to scroll way down to the bottom, find some save button. And I, I just happened to notice one of the ones I had to figure out um, that. Uh, I have to add this into the menu system on my own. By default, the contact module creates a page called, guess what, contact. And so I'm going to add a link to the main menu, call it contact. It would help if I could spell. Um, its path is contact. I never found that document anywhere. I probably didn't look hard enough. I save that. And let's, you know, let's leave contact last. That's fine. So now we got a site with a home page, an about us page, and a contact page, which is really cool. It sets up the form. It'll email to people. You can set up who it goes to. You can set up different categories, like I want to know about travel. I want to get a problem with the website. I need a, a customer support call. So you know, really quickly, you can see how you're building up the site. So that's the basics of that stuff. The next thing I'm going to do is. Uh, so this is an adventure travel site. So I want to have two things on the site. I want to have the tours I'm going to do. I want to list those out. And I want to list uh, a, a bit about the guides that lead those tours, right? So I'm going to make guides users on the site so they can log in. And we're going to give them their own blog. So they can create blogs and do blog entries and whatnot. So if people want to find out a little about a person, they can look at a bio and do a blog. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to people. They used to be called users in Drupal 6, but now they're people. Uh, and I'm going to go over to permissions, which is uh, a whole cool thing in Drupal, and roles, which is another cool thing in Drupal. So basically, by default, Drupal comes with um, three uh, roles, anonymous, authenticated, and administrator. And uh, they're pretty obvious what they're meant for. I'm going to create a special role called guide. So now we have the role called guide. And I'm going to set for the guide, I'm going to edit their permissions. I'm going to scroll down to the, through these, all these different permissions I could set. I basically want to let them create their own blog entries, edit their own blog entries, and delete their own blog entries. So as quickly, oops, yeah, I missed one there. As quickly as that, I basically have set up, when they log in, they're going to be able to do blog entries, but not much else. So the whole permission thing is you can create as many different roles as you want and have all sorts of different permissions. Typically, on any given site, we always create a web admin uh, role for the person that's going to manage the site, an editor role for people that are going to be able to edit the stuff, and, and then maybe some other role for people that are going to log in if it's a membership site or something like that. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to configure uh, the account settings for people to add a little bit more information than is, is in there by default. So I'm going to configuration uh, people, and I'm going to manage fields there. And you'll see screens like this. In Drupal, one of the beauties of it, especially in Drupal 7, you can put fields on just about anything in Drupal, whatever you can imagine. So I'm just going to, pretty simple, let's add a first name field to the users. So we'll make that a text field. Then you jump through some configuration screens. Uh, for reasons I'll mention when we do the view, I'm going to set that to 10. I'm cheating a little. I'm going to make it a required field. Save it. 
we'll just go with their first name, and then uh, let them put in a bio. We'll make that a long text, which basically is a text area block. Yeah, that's required too. So now we can see we added a couple fields quickly to the user profile. So now these are two fields. We're going to have their first name and a, and a bio. Um, I could add their phone number and all sorts of other stuff, but we'll just go with that for the moment. And now I'm going to use that cool module called Devel to generate a bunch of random users for my site so I have something sort of to test against. So I'm going back to the configuration page and then under development and there's one called generate users. Uh, yep, let's make 50 users. We'll make them all guides because that's all I really care about. Bam, I have 50 users on the site. I can grow as fast as Facebook. <laughs> oh yeah, and what the heck, since we got 50 users, let's generate a little content for those guys. So I'm going to use Devel again, but generate content, and let's make blog entries. Oops, not pages. Uh, what the heck? We'll make a hundred blog entries. Um, and we'll generate those. So now Devel is going out there and it's generating a bunch of blog entries. So now I have a whole bunch of blog stuff. So uh, that's pretty cool because that's all there. But it isn't available to me yet. So since we have the blog module turned on, I think it came on by default, or maybe I turned it on. Um, we're going to go back to the menu system, and there's a page called guess what blog that I'm going to add into the main menu. I'll call it blog. The path is blog. And we're putting it on the main menu there we can see. And we'll put the blog after home. So now there we go we got a blog page and look at that it's got all those blog things in it and I can read more and I can go to Anaka's blog. So I got a whole bunch of functionality thrown in there you know, pretty quickly by enabling the blog module and I got a bunch of content that I can look at. So that's sort of cool. So the next thing I want to do is we got all those guides in there. We want to show our guides. We said something about that, right? So one of the modules you'll definitely get very familiar with is views, which it's not here because I haven't turned the module on yet. So views is basically a way to, to create lists of stuff and display them through Drupal. So the list can be displayed in a variety of ways, grids, tables, all sorts of different things, but views is, is pretty much uh, nobody builds sites without views. So we're going to go down, we're turn the views module on, and that's this I find a little dumb, but you also have to turn the views UI mod part of it on, otherwise you can't actually do anything with them. Uh, and the, one of the nice things about Drupal 7 is telling me I need uh, C tools, chaos tools as well. So, yep, you can go ahead and turn that on at the same time. One of the other cool things in Drupal 7 is it, there's a whole under reports. You can uh, see what modules are out of date. And in, except for Drupal core, it will actually update them on the fly for you if you want them to. So you can stay up to date, which is a nice thing. Uh, so now we have views. So as you turn modules on, one of the things that happens in Drupal is it starts to add more stuff into the menu. So now under structure, I got views because modules is turned on. So I'm going to add a new view to the site. We're going to call this view guides. And I get a sort of a starting head here. So I'm going to show content. So this is content is blog entries, articles, things like that. I want to show users in this particular view. So I'm going to switch this to users. I'm going to let them be unsorted for the moment. I want to create a page of these guides. Um, I'm going to show them in a grid view uh, using fields. And let's put a menu system uh, menu entry in there on the main menu. By default, I tried to put it on the development menu. So then I click continue and edit. So now I'm in the view. And this is the most complex part of Drupal uh, admin pages, I think, anyways. And basically, views can have multiple displays. So if we have time, I'll see. We're going to create a page display. We could also pay, uh, create a block display. So on the finished site here, um, if I go look at guides, this is basically the sort of thing we're trying to show, You know, their picture and their first name. And you notice uh, on this, in the sidebar here, there, it's showing the three upcoming tours. So that's a block that I can place on the page. I made that with a view as well. So let's do the users first. So, it's going to be grid. Um, 
we're going to add some fields to it. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use user fields and we want their first name. If I miss it, yell, there it is. And we want their, where's their picture? Created date, somebody help me, help me. Picture, there it is. So I'm going to select those two fields to show in this, in this particular view. Um, I don't want to label on them because that will make it look stupid. And I don't want to label on that because it won't look good there either. And then this name was thrown in there by default for me. So oops, I'm going to click on name and remove that from the view. So now when we get our little grid display, it's going to show uh, first name and picture in that order. If I rearrange them, we get my little thing. Let's put the name under the picture. And then down here you can see a preview. And if you notice, there's a blank hole there. Uh, and it took me a while to figure that out the first time I did this. But it's because I haven't f uh, done a filter. Right now it's showing all users. So that's the user one that gets made when you install Drupal. And I just want to show guides. So I'm going to add a filter here that's going to use user stuff. And their role. And they have to be a guide to go in this. And now you see that blank spot on one way, so there's, there's that. Um, it's also doing paging at 10 items, so you can see I got holes on each of the pages there. So since I'm doing four up, if I looked at the settings for this, it, it's doing four up by default. So I'm going to page uh, number items. I'm going to do it something that's a multiple of uh, four. So 12, now they'll fit in there. And you see I got a pager for free down there. This little preview as you're changing stuff keeps coming up there. And then let's add a sort field to sort by their first name. So their names are pretty ugly because they were made by development. There we go. Um, we got a path and a guide. So if we save that, and go to the home page, now we have our guides and we click on it. And there they are. So now I can go back. I should probably wait till the end to do all this, but I can go back to the menus and I just it's it's part of me that doesn't like things out of order. So I want my guides right in front of my blog. So now we got, you know, five pages on our site. We got a nice uh, display of the guides. When we actually put them in for real, they'll look more like this. And we're halfway through. So um, the big part of that was user roles and permissions and using views to create lists of stuff, which don't always look like lists. They can look like that. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is the other big part of the site is tours. We want to have tours in our site. So we're going to create a new content type. So I want to go to structure. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. What did I, I out on, what did you do to get rid of that blank box? And Good question. Let me go just real back real quick and, and show you where it was. So basically, when you create views, uh, so here I'm going to go back. I'm going to edit my view. Um, so there's the um, filter criteria. So basically, I filtered by role. So it, ha if it's, it's a, it has to be in the role of guide. The user one that's created when you install it gets the administration role. So that's why I was like yeah, because there's no user picture or anything. Right, that was why. It took me, don't feel bad, it took me like probably a couple months to figure that out. <laughs> so your pain is my pain. Uh, so here we're back on our site. So what was I going to do next? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, content type. So we're going to go to content type. So this is really another, views are huge in, in Drupal. Content types are huge as well. So this idea that you can create your own content types and put all these different fields in them really lets you build you know, some, some really cool stuff. So by default, we get articles, pretty boring, basic pages, you know, you need them, blog entries, you nice, nice them. So I could take articles and turn them into tour types, but I'm just going to add a whole new content type from scratch. So I'm going to call this a tour. I could give it a description. I probably really should. Uh, and then I'm going to save and add field. So basically, I just named the content type tour at this point. So remember that, that one we were doing the user stuff, and we added fields to the user account. So this is a screen that looks exactly like it. This is the whole thing of adding fields to stuff that Drupal 7 does really well. And uh, we want to add some new fields to this. Uh, before we do that, 
since a tour is probably going to, I want to have a picture associated with it. I want to have a date. That's a really important part of things for the tours. Like, when am I going to go? So uh, let's go back to modules and let's turn on the date module, which is another one. Date and calendar modules are one you use, people use a lot on their sites. Uh, so rather than have to write all sorts of code to figure out dates, I'm going to turn the date module on. I need the date API. And date pop-up gives me a nice little pop-up calendar to select a date from instead of having to type a date in. And we want to be able to use dates with views, so we're going to turn that on. I think it's those four. And then we're going to save. So now I'm going to go back to content types. Because what would have happened is when I would have tried to put the date field in, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been there because I didn't have the module on. So that would have caused a problem here. So I'll just, just go back and uh, manage the fields for the tour content type, which has by default title and body. You can actually get rid of the body field in Drupal 6. You couldn't do that. You always had to have a title and a body. Now you just have to absolutely have a title. But body is good. That'll be the description of the tour. Um, let's put in a guide. So we want to be able to reference the guide. Um, Uh-oh. We need another module. Sorry. So what I want to turn on is there's a way in Drupal to allow you to reference users and nodes from one node to the other. So that's, a, that's another module called reference, which we want to turn on. Reference and user reference in this case. If I want to do node to node, I turn on node reference. So that's another really useful module that doesn't get turned on by default that you often want to use. So now, hopefully, when we go back, we can add everything we want. So let's manage those fields again. Select date. Now I have date. So as I turned on modules, more stuff is showing up here, right? So I'm going to do it. And I want to remember I turned on the pop-up calendar. I want to do it from a pop-up calendar. And then, since these are tours, I only care about, so I'm going to uh, limit the dates to just a day. I don't really care when the, it starts. I do want to have an end date for the tour, and I'm going to make that required. So as you go through these things, you want to look through all those configuration things and decide what you want. You can always go back and change them later. Make the whole date field required. Um, whenever you do these things, it's a, there's a number of values. I only want to get one date, but maybe if there was multiple dates, I could set that out. Um, collect an end date, so I'm going to save that. So now we got our date field. Now let's add our guide field. And the guide is basically we want to make a user reference. So remember, I didn't turn on that module. Now user reference is available there. And we'll do it from a select list. That sounds good to me. Could be radio buttons if we want. Um, we only want to be able to select guides from the role guides. That was the one we created. And we only want active guides. So if I fire the guy, I really shouldn't be putting them on a tour, right? So we'll do it that way. And we will make it every tour will have a guide. Uh, and let's add a photo as well. And that would be image, and that'll be the image widget. I can make a default image if I wanted, but let's get a good image every time we do this. Let's make that a required field. Um, down here at the bottom, there is this uh, image preview, uh, the number of values. So this is how many photos I could upload as part of a tour. I'm just going to leave it at one. Uh, my understanding with Drupal is you really either want to make it unlimited and let them upload as many as possible or one. If you set it to one of these numbers and you want to change it later, Drupal doesn't like that as I understand it. So you want to be careful with that. I'll just leave this one at one. So I think we got all the fields we want there. Yeah. So what would we use to generate a whole bunch of tours? Devel. Yes. And that would be devel generate content, just like we did the blog entries. So we just want to create tours. 50 is probably good. I got this last night, but when I scroll down, a lot of times you can just ignore all this red stuff. Because when I scroll down, it says it made 50 nodes. So I am going to... I'm going to believe them. Actually, I'm not going to believe them. I'm going to go to this Find Content, which lets me see all the content on my site, and I can filter it by tours. Let's see if we got any tours here. And we can already see we do. We got a whole bunch of tours. So whatever happened with Devel was 
Drupal was still happy with Duel, so we're done. So we got a bunch of tours in there. So what do we want to do next? We want to create a page that lists the tours, so that would be a view. Yes. So we're going to go create a new view, our second view of the day. We'll call it Tours. This time we do want to show content. We want the type to be Tour. We're going to make it unsorted. When I do this unsorted thing, that's just so I don't have to remove one thing on the next screen. If I left it there, I'd have to do it. So we're going to call it Tours, Tours. What do we want to do? We want to do a, let's do a table view. No, that's not right. Oh yeah, table view, sorry, with fields. We'll put 10 a page, we'll use a pager, we'll create a menu entry, put the menu on the main menu, not on the development menu, and continue and edit. So now we've set it up, and same sort of stuff we did last time, we'll add some fields to display in a table in this time, and we'll use fields from content. Um, so we're going to use the date, the guide, uh, I think we got the title already. Yeah, we got the title already. And I think there's something else I want here. Yeah, we'll start with those. I'll remember what it was I was missing in a second. Uh, we'll leave labels on in this. When we show the date, we'll show a medium sized date. Go the guide. Oh uh, yeah, we wanted to show a picture too. What do we call it? There it is. We call it the photo. So when I do the photo, instead of uh, in, this is going to be a tabular view. So let's by default Drupal has three different image sizes. You can add more. We'll look at that in a second. Let's make that a thumbnail or a, yeah thumbnail size, and we'll link it to the content. So if you click on it, you go see the tour. And let's rearrange these just because I'm not particularly fond of that arrangement. So we'll put the photo first, followed by the title, date, and guide. So as I'm building that out, you can sort of see the table being built down below there, right? And then I want to add, so it's only going to show tours. I'm going to add one more filter to only display tours that haven't ha happened yet, right? That would probably make sense. People are not generally interested in something that happened in the past. Uh, so we're going to do that off the end date. Actually, we'll do it off the start date, sorry. And this was another one of the little gotchas that took me a while to figure out. So that's okay for defaults. So we're basically filtering my date. Uh, so we don't want to select the date. Then everybody, you'd have to type in the darn date every time. So it's going to be, we're going to say we want a date equal, greater than or equal to a relative date. And this is the one that took me a while to figure out. I put in the word now there. So now it's relative, right? So now all these dates should be you know, in the future somewhere. We ha don't have any sort criteria, so let's do a sort by date would probably make the most sense, right? And we'll sort by start date. And we'll sort ascending. So now that list shows us the ones that are close. You know, there's one starting today, actually. Um, we got it in the menu, so that's pretty good. We should be able to save that. And there's tours. I, I know I'm doing this too many times, but I just like things in the right order. So since tours are integral to our business, we're going to put them right after the home page. So if I click on tours, now I got a whole bunch of tours. I got a pager down at the bottom. I can click through and see a guide. I can go back and click through and see that. Um, there's all that stuff. Um, the other thing I, I meant to do, which I didn't, but uh, let's do it now, is I also want to categorize tours, right? I want to say this is a mountain biking tour, a hang gliding tour, those kinds of things. So Drupal has this cool thing called taxonomies, which basically lets you create categories. By default, it has one called tags, which is free tagging. But if you want to add your own vocabulary, let's call it tour type. So now I got two. Let's add some terms to that. Let's 
scuba. Another little thing I learned is if you hit, just hit enter on this page, you can just keep on clicking through them. You don't have to scroll down and click save every time. Uh, mountain biking. And I could add as many as I want to. is probably good enough, right? Let's save that. Oops. So now we have two in there. And just for fun, let's go back to Devel and let's regenerate the tours. Another beauty of Devel. Um, uh, before we do that, though, sorry, I know I'm jumping around. So I created a taxonomy. It's not being used by anybody yet, right? So we want to go back to our content type and have that used as part of the tour content type. So we're going to add type as a new field. We're going to make it a term reference. Got to know that. And it'll be a select list. So now if I save it, we want to pick the vocabulary. So we're going to pick that one we just created. There's tour type. And that's good enough for me. I'm only going to allow a tour to have one type. I could have had many. So now I've got that added to the content type. So now if I go to develop and regenerate those tours, we'll have some tour types as well, generate content. And the cool thing about Devel is I can say, okay, yeah, I only want to create tours, delete all the content that was already there. So one of the things to remember about Devel, it will delete all of the content. So don't put any good content in if you're playing around with Devel and you're going to delete stuff. Do that at the end. We typically deliver sites to, to our end users, our clients, you know, uh, blank. So we deliver them the shell, they put in the content later. So use, doing this with Devel is okay uh, in the early stages. But remember, it's going to get rid of it all. I've said a few four-letter words a few times when I deleted things I really wanted. Like darn. darn. So now if we go to our tours, there they are, they're generated anew. If I go to a tour, um, they have been tagged, so this one happens to be my mountain So Again, with Drupal, now if I click on mountain biking, there's a page I didn't even have anything to do with, but it shows me all the mountain biking tours. So you, you sort of get all this stuff for free, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is play a little with uh, media and image styles. I don't think I'm actually going to go through it because we're running a little uh, late here. But basically, Drupal comes with uh, three image styles. You can create as many as you want. And it, as opposed to telling your users, well, send me one in a thumbnail and send me one in this, you basically let them upload whatever, virtually whatever they want here, and you set up image styles. So it's going to create the image styles you want, and then you can use them in, like in the views on the tours page in the thumbnail version. I create a special version for the node display of that tour. So image styles are really important. As a matter of fact, they're... I only really got into image styles in the last year, so I'm a new evangelist for these. But you know, I used to think, ah, give them a wizard editor, they can put whatever images they want in there. But when you do it that way, A, they can create really ugly stuff, and B is you don't you can't then reuse that image in different places in different sizes. So you really want to use media image uh, presets uh, to create this, the sizes you want, and then you have your theme sort of display them in, in the right places in the right sizes. So. So that's a really important part of Drupal to play with. Another really important part of Drupal to play with is a module called Path Auto. So let's turn that on real quick. It's in here. I know it is. Did I mess it? Uh, and Path Auto basically can control the, I'm going to turn that module on real quick can control the URLs that are used across your site. And that's another important thing, both for SEO as well as for uh, uh, module development, things like that. Path Auto wants tokens, so I'm going to turn that on as well. And then I'm going to go use Path Auto to do some cool stuff, if I can find it. Oh, there it is, URL ASs. So I go over to Patterns, and basically for the different things on my site, I can create the, automatically have Path Auto create the URL for them. So, and then under here, there's all these cool little things you can use, which are tokens. So I'm just going to grab the content type for the particular node. So I'm going to create a, con a path for all the content on my site that is slash content, slash content type, slash node title, right? And I'm going to save that. I can do that for users and terms and all sorts of other stuff. We're just doing it for content at the moment. 
just to give you a sense. And then having done that, the other cool thing is you can go change this at any point in time. Now, that may have effects on your SEO, but if you do need to change it, you can go over here and say, hey, I want to recreate all the URL aliases for all of my content. And Path Auto is going to go out that and there and do that for me. So if I now go to the tour page and click on a tour, I can see that, see how it says content, tour, and then the title. So I basically generated the good SEO kind of stuff for my, my URLs on the site. Uh, I'm sorry. So basically the URL ends up being my site name slash content slash the token for the content type which happens to be tour slash the title of that particular content. And you can play all sorts of games with all those tokens to create all sorts of interesting things um, in terms of your, your URLs. Then uh, the last module I'm going to play with here really fast which again is really cool. Has anybody built a, a web form on their own by hand? Okay. Is it easy? <laughs> Okay, web forms. Web forms, another module. Got to have it. A lot of people throw away the contact page that we added here and they use web forms. And web forms is a way within five minutes you can put together a, a, a live uh, form on your site and uh, have it running in no time. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go to, uh, what did I do here? Form. So now, again, by enabling that module, I can create web forms, give it a title, let's do feedback. Uh, we'll provide a menu link, put it on the main menu, that's all good, save it. And similar screen here, so let's say get, my, get a person's name, that's a text field, we'll add that. get their email address, get that. And get their feedback. Make that a text area. Get that. I could have made them mandatory. I'm just trying to run through this really fast. So now I got my web form. I could go configure it to who gets what and you know have all sorts of things associated with it. But basically my web form is now ready and if I go to the site, there it is, feedback, and there's a web form ready to uh, go. If I fill it in, it's going to get emailed to that address, email address that I set up with the site, so it, it's up and running in no time at all. So then the last thing I'm going to do is, so we sort of built out the site. Um, I, I went out to Drupal and I looked around at all the themes out there and I found this one called Drupal Ace that I sort of like, so I have uploaded that. I'm going to enable that particular uh, theme. And now our site will magically take on that look and feel. So now we got the, the basic site there. So we've pretty much built out the site. There are a few other things that are on the real site that I did. Um, let me just talk you through a couple of those. Uh, and then we'll open up for some quick questions. So basically, uh, remember we did views. These are really important. There's a module called views slideshow. So uh, hopefully that parachuter will go away in a second. Maybe not. But that, there we go. So that's set up. I added a module called View Slideshow. I basically just created uh, a view that uses the tour content type with just the picture and the title. And it uses an image preset to get it to the right size I like there. And I got a slideshow on my site, you know, in five minutes. Um, that was really easy to do. Um, we talked about doing, I did a, also did a view of the tours that basically shows it as a block. That's what's here on the right hand side. And there was one other thing. Oh, and then the other thing is if I go to an actual tour, so let's uh, let's go to North Shore. See this layout here? By default, when you create a content type, it's the field sort of top to bottom displayed that way. So, you know, sometimes people would use build a lot of CSS to do what you see there. The, the image is on the right. It's that image preset. There's the text on the, or image on the left, text on the right. There's a module, which I found about last year at DCLA, called Display Suite. And I believe uh, Joe Chellum is doing a presentation on that. And don't write code. Don't write CSS. Use a module. And it basically lets you do node layouts like that. So I basically did that and configured it. So if I go in here under uh, Structure, and look at my content types on the finish site. And there's the tours, and I go over to manage display. Um, there's, there's, you see how I have this, I can pick different layouts. So it lets me do all sorts of stuff that standard stock Drupal doesn't do. 
And then the other thing on this site that I used, which I love as well, is um, Colorbox. So that's a JavaScript library you add to the system. And then there's a Colorbox module. So if I click on that picture, it gives me those things. So all I had to do was enable the color uh, box module and configure that uh, that field to say when somebody clicks on it, fire up color box. So you know it took me five minutes to do that. So that's my quick right about 45 minutes of building out a site. Um, hopefully it didn't scare you off, but you know realize that in a, in a really short period of time you can actually build some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Do you have this recorded anymore? This is being recorded and it will be on the DCLA website. Yeah. Awesome. So it's absolutely recorded. Yeah. There's a mo the the answer to everything is there's a module for that. There's a module. There's probably and, and there, the, one of the problems often is there's 50 modules for that, right? The one that I have used for that a lot is uh, is Mass Contact. Um, I help manage a, a youth soccer uh, league down in San Diego, and I, I manage the referees. And I use Mass Contact on my little website for them to send them stuff out. You can send it by role and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Can I export some uh, data that is collected via the web form? Yes. Yeah, that's another cool thing about it. You can, if you basically go to the, uh, let me see here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a, you go to the menus and, and you can export to a CSV file. I'm um, going to the right, wrong places. But yeah, you can absolutely export that to Excel. You can go and there's a little report and you see all the, the things that have come in. You can delete them if you want and you can export it to a CSV file. Yeah, there was a question there. Yeah, on the, on the home page, is that, a, is that one block on the right? The, this one here? Is that one block? Or yeah, that's one block that shows uh, the three latest upcoming tours and with no pager. All right. So it basically just a view. Yes? Uh, how would you verify email? Um, when, you, when, you, when you set up, you can go in and configure how user accounts work. And you can either say, I, I can create an account and it's just active, or you can say, I want to create an account and I, it'll, Drupal will have to send out an email that the person has to click on to activate the account. When you set up the date, there were like four different things that you had to remember to click in order to make it usable. Are there lists so, of, you know, make sure you do all these things together? No, most often you can really most often you can just take all the defaults, but you really want you gotta you gotta walk through them and read them. And they if you actually read them, they mostly make sense. Dates are one of the most confusing parts of Drupal, though I, I will say. Sorry, I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> In the date section, is there some way to make it so that if somebody updates the blog, it'll go to that date instead of paying the first date that was on there? Um, I don't know of a way to do that. The way I did that for a site, I said I, I uh, helped a nonprofit down in San Diego build a website, and they had a WordPress one. We moved them into Drupal, and instead of using the default dates, I actually put a date field in so that they could put in when they wanted that blog to go live, or you know, as if it had gone live in the past. So that was I, I worked around it by doing that. Yes. On the, the session on the site. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't. Huh? I think well, I think with that you have to click right or right click on it and then save it as. Yeah, I think when you click on a zip file, it doesn't work. Sorry, I should have said that. Yes. Oh, it's still empty. Okay, I'll look at it and see. I thought I had loaded it well. The PDF you're using there. Yeah. Is that usually how you break down your site? You know, do everything. Like your. Um, not exactly. Uh, one of the things we've done, so one of the things you might consider doing is building up a site like this and then backing up the database and backing up the file system. That's what I do. So then you have a starting point that has a bunch of this stuff already done. That's my quick version of that. Um, there's other stuff uh, that a lot of the Drupal folks use that I use a little bit, but things like uh, Drush. Drush is a command line interface that lets you build up a website local on your, your laptop. So what I use, this is a Windows laptop, I use WAMP server on it to, to do things locally and then I move things up to the website. But a lot, and then there's a whole, you can create make files and all this thing, but the quick version when you're starting out for me has always been uh, create a site that I, has most of the stuff I want in it, back up the database and the files, and then that's my starting point next time. So I don't have to install Drupal, I just restore the database into an empty one, move the files up there, and fix the settings that PHP file, which is the one that points to the database. That's the special file you have to fix. Um, and one more question if there's one, and then a project. Yeah. 
Hmm. When you add modules, it shouldn't do that. Let's chat afterwards and see if there's any things we can do. Um, I, just to let the next person get going, I think we should call up. Thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the uh, camp.